Welcome to Crown Talk. Get it? Raw, Raw Talk, Mac Talk. Anyways, that was me trying to be funny. That didn't quite work out. Links down below in the description box. Again, as always, to credit WWE for posting these articles. The text results that I always read from. The full official video recap, which is only about 12 minutes long. Hopefully my video is even shorter. And this one minute interview with Kathy Kelly and Kevin Owens backstage post-match, which I actually thought was just really good, but I'll get into that in, in just a moment. So overall, the number one thing that I was pleased with in terms of this event, not necessarily the outcome of each match, but that's always going to be the case, is the duration. A lot of people have talked about, including myself, the five-match PLE feeling a little empty. It's like mashed potatoes without the gravy and the dressing on top. Seven matches, technically six, because, you know, the whole KO Randy Orton thing. But, but still, the duration I felt was proper. This was like, this was a good amount. I think eight or nine might have been probably pushing it a little bit too much. Uh, but the seven felt like a good number in my opinion. Anyhow, number one, the first match, which I thought was going to be the, the last match, but it wasn't, or one of them, the bloodline versus the OG bloodline, not ending the way I wanted, but for me, it, it was still a good match. It shows that Roman obviously is still human. Uh, would have liked the match to have gone on just a little bit longer than the post-match had a brawl kind of made up for that. Sami Zayn came out. I had no idea what it was. Blah, helps if I could speak. I had no idea what his original intentions were when he was staring down Solo Sokoa going, yeah, 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 you like that? And then he goes to kind of give him a hug. Then he gives him the, uh, that, uh, you know, suplex there that I always forget the name to. But I also saw that mistake coming when Roman Reigns was in one corner. It was kind of so obvious. Solo's in the middle, right? Jimmy and Jay or Jay Jimmy. And then you've got Sami Zayn. And then they, you know, they went at each other and collided. Obviously, it was a mistake. Jimmy, I thought that was an epic fail on his part, trying to insinuate that it was done on purpose. To me, that made no sense. Logically, you could clearly see that it was an accident, okay? So yeah, the Bloodline 2.0 defeated Roman Reigns and the Usos. They don't even call them the Bloodline, even though they should be. I was kind of hoping Paul Heyman was going to show up. Just something. Just, we didn't get it. Whatever. It happens. You could see Sami Zayn there. Fatal 4-Way Women's Tag Team Championship. Wild match. Really, really good spectacle. And Bianca and Jade retained their titles. And I'm okay with that. I really, really do like them together. And I'm really impressed with um, Lash Legend and, you know, her partner, Jakara Jackson. Sorry. I'm still getting used to them, right? Because they're from NXT. I still don't even know if they're con official on the main roster. I mean, I guess so. They just debuted at a main roster PLE or whatever it's called. Uh, but yeah, this was really good. Again, Kyrie Sane, as you could see here. Like, I mean, never fails to impress EO Sky. Great, great match. Seth Rollins defeats the Big Bronson Reed. This was also really nice. I really like that super stomp from the top rope and then he ate another stomp on the stairs and if you recall again a lot of these moves hurt for real I think Bronson Reed actually had his eyebrow like gouged but this was good because the biggest thing that this match did for me which I already knew I already knew like I I've saw I've seen his stuff with uh with Braun Strowman and just other people in general like from day one I was always a huge fan of this guy like huge huge fan from a look perspective from a build perspective yeah when I first saw him I was like oh okay earthquake 
if you remember like the natural disasters, earthquake and typhoon, he used to go by tugboat uh, back in the 80s and 90s when I very, very first saw him. And I was like, he's probably not going to be like agile, like a, uh, oh my God, I just had his name, Bam Bam Bigelow kind of thing. Bam Bam Bigelow was huge. But for a big guy, endurance, stamina, agility, this guy just blows me away. And that match there just showed more than ever that he really does belong in like the main event spotlight when you're sharing a card with only five to seven matches. He belongs in there. He does just really, really well. And uh, I just appreciated, like I said, what these people put themselves through. Naya. There we go. Emotional moment, obviously. To be the first ever. So we have Naya for our fourth match versus Liv for the Crown Jewel title. Naya's doing well for sure as of late. Like I say, he's been... Right? But I have to admit, she is playing her role very well. Like she's doing really well. Doesn't look like she's constantly botching and, and injuring people. Which is what my initial issue with her used to be. It was like her and Brie Bella, right? Because with all due respect, Nikki Bella was always, in my opinion, the better of the two. And it's not an insult. It's just, that's just the way it is, right? I don't know if Brie trained as hard or just didn't quite have it as well as uh, as Nikki did. To me, Brie Bella was like the Marty Janetti. Again, take that as you will. So this... This was nice. Tiffy time came out mid-match. And then Raquel attacked Tiffy, grabbed a briefcase. Things got a little goosey. And then interference led to Liv Morgan winning. But at that point, you know, with Dom out and everything like that, there was no chance for Tiffany to cash in. I was hoping at a spot like this, that we could have a cash in, but maybe drag it on a little bit more. I don't know, but I felt like, what's the next PLE? Is it? Is it Survivor? No, War. I, oh my God, I don't even know. When Survivor? You know what? Let. Hold on a second. Okay, so I just looked because I had to make sure. Oh, there you go. See, it shows Bronson Reed really split open his eyebrow there. Yeah. So November thirtieth. That's in like. 27 days, just a few more weeks. Survivor Series, I would like to see something happen with uh, Tiffany Stratton cashing in that money money in the bank. I think it would be it would be good. Here, it would have just been interesting, but for whatever reason, they didn't do it. Great moment for, you know, Liv Morgan, double champ. Not that this is a title that, like, you defend. I don't know how often they're going to come out and wear it, How much? because they sure as hell advertise the shit out of that belt, didn't they? Uh, but moving forward, I don't know what that means. But I really do like, let me say this, I really do like that added twist, the crown jewel, you know, Saudi Arabia and all that, the diamonds, the extra glitter, and having a belt that you win and it can never be taken away from you. Kind of like, a king of the ring or whatever. You can't lose the kingship. Like you you are, you know, king. There's going to be new ones afterwards, but nobody can uncrown you. So she's always going to be a crown jewel champion. And moving forward, that means that at that particular time that year, she was a champion that faced another champion and persevered on top. And again, it's not title for title, but instead you crown this belt. And to me... I actually think it's a great move. Once in a while, maybe you come out, you still wear it, but I can kind of understand, like, at some point, you know, there also comes a fine line where you can't be wearing it however many hundreds of days a year that they compete. I mean, maybe you can. I mean, Kurt Angle always walked around with his gold medals, right? So maybe you can forever. But what was that other one that was at Crown Jewel? The Greatest Royal Rumble or something like that? There was a... Uh, was it Braun Strowman that won that? It was kind of an ugly belt. At least I thought it was. 
and we never saw it again. So put so much emphasis on this, but hopefully we see a bit more of it. I don't know. I feel like I'm just kind of going on uh, in circles here, but that's just my thoughts on that, on that Crown Jewel Championship. It's uh, I like it. I, I like the idea behind it. This, this, for me, ended up in a no contest. Kevin Owens, Randy Orton... KO is a savage. Yeah, I wrote down KO is a savage when he's a heel, if he's technically a heel. Yeah. Chair shot before the match even opens. Uh, Kevin Owens stunned a ref. Uh, Kevin Owens punched Jamie Noble, who, if you remember now, he works with WWE backstage as security. He used to be a part of J&J security with um, Seth Rollins back in the coward days when Seth Rollins played the coward heel. And then Nick Aldis and Adam Pierce came out. RKO on Adam Pierce. Kevin Owens, as you can see right here, elbow off the railings on Orton. Sweet effing pineapple, I wrote. The match got canceled, but just that little brawl, that taking it around and, and doing all of that, uh, to me, it was worthy of a match. And then Kevin Owens explains in the post interview here that he got what he wanted out of it because in the end, Randy Orton didn't walk out. He walked out. Kevin Owens didn't. And then he was very polite with Kathy Kelly, which normally heels don't do. They're like, okay, are we done here? He's all like, thank you. Sure, I have a moment. And, uh, you know, when she said, maybe you should get checked out by a medical staff or something like that, he's like, no, no, I don't trust anybody here. Uh, he didn't say anything like, but, but you got any other stupid suggestions? Like, he didn't insult and berate her. So it's kind of like that interesting... I don't know what they call when you're not a heel, you're not a face, you're... I forget what it's called. I want to say a word, but I, I the word that comes to my mind, I'm not going to say because I actually am not sure if that's the correct word or if it's like a really bad word. Sometimes that happens in the language of English uh, for me where there's some words I don't know or I know them but or I know of them, but I forget their origin. And sometimes that can have really bad consequences. So I'm not even going to say the word. Uh, but either which way, I'm still not convinced. And he said, you know, I didn't want this match to begin with, but so be it. Right? So, yeah, you can see right there Adam Pierce taking the RKO. Yeah, so I also got something out of it. Kevin Owens says he got something out of it. I also got something out of it. I thought I thought it was great for something that technically ended up not being a match. It gave us a nice little brawl. The Andrade versus LA Knight and Carmelo Hayes for the US title. Fast paced fast paced match. LA Knight retains and and I'm happy with that. I would have been fine in a way with Andrade. I really do like Andrade. What I'm done with is Andrade versus Carmelo Hayes. Carmelo Hayes drives me nuts, but that's because I am him. Him. There's just something about him that drives me fucking apeshit. But you know what? I like the guy in the ring. He's great. Some people, I don't want to hear them talk. Uh, Andrade, I love. LA Knight, I love. A lot of people I like, but there's very few people that when they talk, I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. Right? So, there you have that. But yeah, this was pretty good. And again, it shouldn't have resulted in in a three-way like this. But that was because of the whole way that LA Knight conducted himself when they had their best of seven series seven match. And then last but not least, this this was awesome for me. Great match. Great show of strength and grit from both people. From both Gunther and... What I really, really liked was Cody won, but the way he won with that back roll-up pin, it still made Gunther look strong. Gunther wasn't, like, choked out. He didn't just get taken out by Crossroads, which he ate a few of those and still kicked out of. So we were able to have him lose and still look incredibly strong. He was far from finished. Ludwig Kaiser wasn't there to start distracting, right? I've said that before for a heel, for somebody who's a part of a faction, they sure as hell don't abuse 
that. They don't take that to their advantage. It's very, very rare that that happens. And then, matter of fact, when they attacked Cody, it was only because Cody attacked Gunther first. Otherwise, Ludwig wasn't going to get involved. So that dynamic of it from Gunther and Ludwig, from a scripting per perspective, of course, I really, really, really appreciate that so, so much. And then what was really nice was Liv Morgan then came out to share the spotlight. Yeah, um, with uh, with Cody Rhodes, they shook hands. They, you know, they showed each other respect. Like they put aside the whole like, you know, I'm a heel. Psh, what are you doing? Don't touch me. You know what I mean? It was just it was just really nice because this was like a pretty big deal. And uh, I'm really happy for Cody. Like I said, he's putting on the matches. He's the workhorse. I know a lot of people are done with Cody. They don't see a lot of value in him. But you know what? That's going to be the case with no matter who is champ. But I see this for him. Always knowing how amazing he was. And from my perspective, for what I think is amazing. And he is going to go down in history as one of my just all-time favorite superstars throughout all the different gimmicks uh, that he went through some that were a little cringy but still pulled off really well he's someone that could have totally faded out into obscurity and we never would have heard from him ever again and it would have just been past distant memories and I'm glad that he was able to you know overcome all those hurdles trying to find himself he could have gotten lost in the mix just like Baron Corbin uh, Matt Cardona, a.k.a. Zack Ryder, and a plethora of other talent that have just, you know, just bye bye Right? Bobby Lashley, um, MVP, Shelton Benjamin. Like, I don't think some people understand how great and amazing Shelton Benjamin is and still is today right now. But there's only so many people that you can showcase. And this is why I wish, in closing here with my rant... I wish I wish within reason the shows and, and this is not a popular opinion I wish somehow that you could have a two hour show but with no commercials because right now Raw is back to two hours but minus the commercials it's an hour and 22 minutes Okay, same thing with Smackdown once it goes to Netflix there's no commercials what I'm hoping is that we're not necessarily going to go back to the three-hour format, but if even if blah, blah, even if we stick to the two-hour format, you're getting an extra 38 minutes. Okay, a lot can happen in that time. It would be I'm not too good at math there, but yeah, close to an extra 40 minutes of showtime to be able to keep some of these people that are amazing and and then throw them into another meaningful storyline. It's okay to have a bunch of little. Storylines, not everything has to be deep like the bloodline, right? You can have some small hissy fits going on between people like what's been going on with Carmelo Hayes and Andrade. You, you can have, you know, a couple of extra little stories like that and something maybe like in between. But that's just my take on it. I, I can't get enough uh, re wrestling. I'm not saying it should go to three hours without commercial. I think that would be a little... A little too much, I'll, I'll admit. But a solid two hours uh, for Raw and a solid two hours if we could for SmackDown. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm just saying for me, I would be okay with that. A lot more storytelling could be told. But if it's going to be watered down storytelling, then of course it's not worth it just for the sake of filling in the time. It has to be meaningful. But I feel like with the roster that we have, shorter period... I don't know. I don't really know the logic but behind it all. I'm not like a an expert with wrestling and, you know, the reasoning behind why they're doing it. I don't know. I think from what I read, and again, it's just what I read, the reason Raw's going back to two hours now, and it has been for a few weeks, is to help the network. Yes, I forget the name of the network off the top of my head. Um, anyways, I forget the name now. Gives them time to fill in that extra slot that they have now that they're going to be missing come January. So it's kind of like, instead of going from 
three hours, nothing, right? Kind of helps them transition into that, whatever. And again, Triple H said himself, so he says, that he doesn't even know what the Netflix thing is going to look like. That I find bizarre if it's true. How would you not? Because that's a pretty important thing. How much canvas time do you have to play with? It's kind of a big deal. Do you have two hours? Do you have three hours of no commercial? Holy cow. Anyways, enough rambling on my part. I'm afraid to even see how long this... Oh my god. It's twice as long as the official video recap from WWE. Hey, at least it's not 33 minutes long or so like last year's Crown Jewel recap. Thumbs up as always if you like the video. It does greatly help support the channel with the algorithm and trying to make me more relevant in the search results and people are looking shit up online. You didn't like the video, go ahead, give it a thumbs down. I'll bend it in half, twist it, break it off in your ass, and you'll get an RKO backwards so that you land. Anyways, we don't need all the details. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, I mean naturally, that would be great. But if not, thanks for stopping by anyways. Take care. And if I'm lucky, maybe I'll see some of you in the next one. Bye for now.